I don't know how it's gonna be later on. So we have somebody really special. He's gonna tell us a few uh, rules in his game. He's gonna give you some indications. You guys better have a pencil now because it's something you need to write on your cell phone uh, because he's gonna make something fascinating, okay? I hope everybody's ready. So are you ready, Ben? I'm ready. We're going to do that interactive challenge, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. So three, two, one, go! Let's do it. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, Javier, can you see, you just see me? You don't see my desktop or the... Um, um, not yet. Not yet. Okay. So, how do I... Um, Alfredo is going to give you access, but you have a green, a green uh, arrow. Ah, oh, very good. Good. Perfect. All right, we got it. Awesome. Okay, perfect. I'm going to start this. So, um, maybe it's going to let me. There we go. You need to do okay. That. Can you see the um, the PowerPoint? Yes. Yeah, perfect. definitely. We can see it. Okay. So if um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a demonstration today. It's going to be an interactive paper mark challenge. And the interesting thing about this is it's going to allow us to see <clears throat> kind of how we all evaluate occlusal paper marks on teeth. All right. And one of the things that you know, a few of the studies, the study has been repeated, I think, three or four times when dentists are choosing there seems to be some disparity between or a lack of agreement in what we would choose as to the highest force okay which would impact patient care i think we would all agree on that so you don't need to download anything to participate this is completely anonymous but what you do have to do is just go to uh, either pull up your tablet or your smartphone web browser and go to dtrparticipol.com and you guys can um, my host can play along in this game if they would like so you should see something like this on your screen Just give you a couple minutes or just a minute here and we'll start this up. I'm always interested. This is one of the favorite parts when we do this live is the, the um, live calculation. It's going to be amazing. Do you think, Ben, the delay that we have is a little, always a little delayed? Is going to affect the calculations or no? We're good. No, it should. If you're delaying and you're recording it, it should, it should be just fine. No, for your feedback, I think. Oh, it might. I have yeah. a couple of test questions here. We'll, we'll check it out. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You need to calculate like a one minute, I think, is the delay because I'm watching you and I'm watching Facebook in my phone simultaneously. And it's a little bit of delay just to make you aware. It's all yours. You okay. Want to we only it? have we only have like six or seven um, uh, slides to calculate, so we should have plenty of time to wait a full minute. <clears throat> so um, this is a paper that um, I wrote and published, showing that um, when dentists are looking at paper marks, they are about thirteen percent accurate. That's shocking, right? And there's no agreement on, on the paper marks that dentists choose. So we're going to do a test. Um, just a couple of questions here. I've got two kind of leading questions where I find out just how long doctors have been practicing and also uh, what their specialty is or if they're a general. So I can see that the two of you have voted we're kind of waiting for everyone else because of the delay, but here's where you need to go, dtr.participol.com, and we'll wait for this number to change. Okay. 
Good. Looks like the tabulation in the bottom right hand corner is um, is tabulating. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Off to the races. Awesome. So Javier, if you'll let me know when a minute's up, and then I'll advance the slide because of the delay. Is that is it okay? Yeah. In the Facebook now, only say two people vote, and we have twenty in real time. Twenty twenty one. So you can calculate the delay. Okay. How many do we have watching? We have 125 people. Okay, well, hopefully we'll get um, 50 people that are will participate. That'll give us a good sample. I'd like more, but um, 50 would be awesome. Everybody, please do this. We want to interact. This is the new era, the new way to connect people. DTR.participool.com. That's good. This will give us a breakdown of where everybody's at. Let's see if I can minimize this. Yes, beautiful. Okay. Okay, I'm going to move forward uh, just because I don't see the indicator uh, growing anymore. But maybe on the next subsequent slides, we'll get a couple. Many have answered so far. All right. So here's our breakdown. It looks like 42% are zero to 10 years. And uh, the next biggest group is 10 to 20. And then we kind of slide off. All right. So here is the next question. I am a general dentist, prosthodontist, endodontist, periodontist, orthodontist, or oral surgeon. And we'll give this a minute. Ben, a lot of people is doing, uh, posting in Facebook the answer. That doesn't count for the tabulation, right? No, that's not going to go no. there in the poll. They have no, to, it doesn't they have count. To log in. Okay. Yeah, if you're, if you're posting in Facebook, it has to go through it has to go through dtr.participol.com um, yeah. for it to be no, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see that at least people is engaged, so they do doing. So just to inform, to, to inform everybody, if you guys want to participate into the tabulation, you guys need to go to the website that we tell you that is... Uh, dtr.participol.com. I sprinkled it in on a couple of the slides, not to be too redundant. Okay. Okay, so here we, here go. we go. I'm going to advance. I'm gonna pin So most of the people watching are either a general dentist or a prosthodontist, which is not <clears throat> too surprising considering we're talking about occlusion, right? Okay, here we go. So let's just get a baseline for everybody. What I want to know is I want you to vote on the worst cavity on the bite wing. Is it A, B, C, D, E, or F? And again, if you want to vote, <clears throat> the, the web address to go to is dtrparticipal.com. It's completely anonymous. There's nothing to download. Yeah, please do. That will, that will make it very interesting when we get to the actual questions, right? These are, these are some uh, uh, kind of litmus tests, right? This one yes. Is kind of like, yeah. Yes. We're going to get to the, um, we got one perio question, and then we're going to get right to the, uh, the occlusal. Interesting. Very good. It'll be interesting to see who... Uh, which which cavity we are going to take care of first? This is a cool triage. Uh, yes, exactly. I was going to say so most people are probably going to agree on the worst, uh, but when we come to the, you know, I'm expecting that we're not going to have as much of consensus on the occlusal marks. Well, and we have a perio question too, so we'll oh, have okay. to see. Also. 
Okay, 28 seems to be our high number, but people can join at any time uh, at dtr.participole.com. Come on, guys, let's get on there. Come on, don't be lazy now. Okay, so uh, roughly 90% of us would say that this lesion here is the largest lesion of the options that are here. And um, that is true, that, that was the case. So D is our answer, our correct answer. And it looks like if, if this patient goes to any of the 28 um, doctors that are participating, 90% of us are gonna treat this patient the exact same way. Okay, the most oh. severe perio lesion on the film <laughs> is A, B, C, D, E or F. And we'll give this a minute for people to brew on. I get your point. I got it. <laughs> well, it's a very important point. Well made. Well made, Ben. This is awesome. This is the way to, love, to interact. I love, yes, I love this. Oh, look, we're getting into the 30s here. People don't want to be left out. They're waking up. They're waking up. Come on, guys. <laughs> Get your cup of coffee. <laughs> Good. Okay, we'll see if we get to 40 on this. Keep going, we almost get it. This is a short point. We get into the line. Two more. Give me two more. Give me two more. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Going once, going twice. All right. What do we get? Got the exact same number. I don't think that's ever happened. So if this if this patient were to come to the 38 doctors that were participating. 90% uh, of us would be concerned or triage that the worst perio lesion is this guy right here. All right? It's about right. Okay. okay. And so <clears throat> when we get to occlusion, this is what I was taught. Um, and how do we traditionally evaluate occlusion? It's the bite mark size, the color intensity of the ink, and then the dreaded bullseye. So Let's say this little tiny mark here has less force on it than this because this one's bigger. We might say with rule number two that the intensity of the color on this cusp is brighter than uh, this one here. So there's more force here. And in the bullseye, this guy right here had so much force in the middle that it just wiped um, the ink off of the tooth. Absolutely, this concept is published nowhere in the literature. And it's been tested a number of times and doctors are about 13% correct. Now imagine that, Javier, put that into context in a lab. If you were to build a crown and your, your material survived 13% of the time, how long would you use that material? Oh my God, yeah. I yeah, exactly, <laughs> oh my God. And so when Robert Kirstein was talking about neurophysiology being attached to the teeth, there is a consequence or a benefit to adjusting these blue marks here. So let's get to the, to the nitty gritty. Now, the background on this case is this is a full arch that I inserted, the patient still numb, and you have to make a determination as to is this okay and balanced is, do, is there something that's really, really high, but I don't want to quite dismiss the patient until we get the bite a little better? Remember, patient's numb, so they're not good. They're going to be a poor indicator of uh, reporting for us. So if you could be so kind as to pick which of the spots indicated has the greatest amount of force. We've already got a couple people. Yeah, we would go traditional, yeah.
and while this is tabulating, I'm going to present the, um, I'm a, well, the next slide will give us the answer and we'll also, um, uh, I'll present the, T, the corresponding T-scan data for each one of these. Our numbers don't seem to be climbing as quick. Oh, no, no, people, that's not nice. People are not answering as much. Come on, jump on it. Get out on the limb and that's, answer. That's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's no, okay. They I have already, delayed. They have delayed. I already, I already put my answer. It's probably going to be proven wrong. And that's, that's the fun part about it, to find out uh, what we think and what uh, uh, we should know are two different things. Okay, here we go. I'm going to tabulate. It doesn't seem to be going any higher. How many answers we have? Oh, ah, I went the wrong direction. Everybody put your answer in one more time. Oh, again? Okay. So yeah, so. it's the same one. I just, I went backwards instead of forwards. Oh, okay. The user has to be smarter than the technology, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Ben, I have you with the wrong background. I apologize. I mean, I say that you look so feminine in my, behind me. Oh, <laughs> Is there a Francesca in there? Yeah, wait. Oh my God, my bad. Hamid, you need to tell me. What is, uh... I, was, I was too engaged in voting. <laughs> Here we go. All right, here we go. Okay, so the overwhelming majority of us agree that C is the contact point that has the highest force. That would be this guy right here, okay? In reality, it's A. It's this guy right here. Wow. And look, if you compare C, there's not a lot going on here. In fact, yeah. So your your the most the biggest point of contact is this little squeak right here on the canine. All right. So it looked like two percent of you got it right. <laughs> They must okay, have contact it. with the most force. Now, I'll give you a background on this guy. This guy uh, came into my office. He had had four full mouth reconstructions and was in pain. And his bite was not balanced. So what we're going to do is choose between A, B, C, D, E, and F. And the interesting thing is that these um, palatal cusps here all look like the bullseye variety to me anyway all right all right so lock in your answer huh. please okay yes over here and let's see. this one is hard it's more difficult to pick well, again, and it's it's nothing that I um, it's nothing I pre-selected, other than the fact that I just randomly chose patients in my own office, where I took uh, a T scan, had the patient do the tap tap on the uh, bite paper, and then took a picture. So there's no ill intent to purposely mislead. No, 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 no. I'm just saying the pattern is is uh, actually. For me, I would look and say, hey, we have to get some of those buckle interferences out of the way and, and maybe refine sure. those, right? Um, right. Okay, here we're at um, 32, so I'm going to go ahead and advance. All right, so here we really don't have any agreement. <laughs> All right. So what is the answer? The answer is E. It's this guy right here. So 4% are 
I'm sorry, 12%, four docs got that, got that correct. All right, so here we go. This is a patient who was um, having some pain and wanted me to um, check her bite and evaluate it. And so our marks are A, B, C, D, E, and F. And some of these look like they have halos, some of them don't. But again, just a general dentistry application. Yeah, I call those lake effect. Kind of like, you know, empty center or what do you call it, target. Um, what effect? The lake, like it's a lake in the middle of the... Oh, gotcha. Right? Lake. Gotcha. Effect. Now, this is great. I'm glad people are participating because I didn't want to come on here and present the same thing that I presented last Monday. No, this is really cool. Excellent technology. Great. I love it. Okay. So we've almost got, oh, we're back to 30. Okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and advance. Okay. Somebody asked what thickness of paper you use, just in case. Quick answer. Uh, 20 micron. All right, so no consensus across the board. And the answer is A. You can see across the front here, that pink pixel is the one that's got the greatest amount for us. So six of you got that right. I see. And is that the, the center line uh, you had in that, uh, is that the, the snake you're talking about having? Yeah, that's the favorite yeah. snake. So, so even this though that's right the here. hardest, the, the, the majority of the strength is on the other side. So that's yeah, the it, in the front and the slide back. Yeah, so she, she hits first on eight, and then and most of the, the bite force is on the right, and then she crosses over to the left as she comes right. into MIP. Okay, <clears throat> I think we have two more. So our marks are A, B, C, D, E, and F. Please lock in your votes. Yeah, the, um, that was a great question on the, the thickness of the uh, bite paper, uh, Javier. The, there, there was actually a study that was done where the thickness of the paper um, just means that the, the size of the paper mark goes up, but there's no correlation between the two. So you, you, but you would want to have the smallest, or the thinnest, uh, AccuFilm uh, possible uh, um, just so you're being you're leaving less ink on the paper you're getting less uh, let me say that a different way less false positives I guess would be the thought process yeah I Ooh, we got remember who mentioned here. that don't like to use a uh, Vaseline into the paper that was you or was it Robert uh, I think that was Robert somewhere. yeah okay so on this one, I can, I can say you all got it wrong. Because the only one that doesn't have a vote here is E. <laughs> and E is the answer. Wow. 
Okay, now this is real application. Let me give you a little backstory on this. This is a full contour, three unit zirconia bridge. And the patient says to me, hey doc, it feels pretty good in the back, but in the front, I have a, um, it's high, my bite's off. And so I'm like, okay, well give me the tap, 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 and let's see. And then I just took a picture. So our marks are A, B, C, D, E, or I'm sorry, F or E. And so this one's just limited to one tooth and not a quadrant or an anterior. Wrong anyway, so might as well just swap. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, man. You gotta. There is a random chance you're gonna get one. Right. <laughs> exactly, it's too random. So it, but it's interesting though because um, so many people push back against the technology and say, "Well, it's just digital bite paper." Well, yeah, it is, but it gives you data and the, the bite paper doesn't. And this, this uh, is a great illustration of that point. And so, again, like I said, there's consequences and benefits for every occlusal adjustment that you make. So here we're, okay, 29. Let's see if we get one more. There we go. Come on, guys. Let's see. Let's see. Both, I... both, both. Okay. I... I think it was this, C. I didn't mark, but I think it's C. Let's see. Okay. So actually, the answer is B. Oh, yes. 30% of us got it right. You see? Uh, all right. It's better to be lucky than good, man. That's what I always say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sometimes that's true. Sometimes that's true. So here you're looking at... Uh, but imagine uh, if you're, do, you're doing that with a hampies. How about yeah. not? <laughs> That's an right. understanding gambling. You know? uh, yeah, okay, yeah. this is our last one, uh, last opportunity to have some fun. This okay. lady came to me. She had a crown done on uh, three and on fourteen, and she said three was fine. She wanted um, tooth number fourteen adjusted. She had been to her the dentist that did the um, tooth, the crown, and had been adjusted two or three times, and she did some research of her own and said, hey, this T-scan thing looks pretty cool. I'm going to go to Dr. Sutter and ask him if he can adjust it. So that's the background on this patient. All right. So. Anyway, the people is voting. Uh, somebody asked, why 20 microns for articulated paper? Um, yeah. Well, Robert also answered, but. Yeah. So I'll probably, you know, I'll probably divert that to a prosthodontist. Uh, that's a good question for Robert. For me, I want something that, that thinness that's going to kind of, uh, fold in between the nooks and crannies of the teeth and not be so rigid because I, God, I have to go back and find the citation because at, uh, we have hundred micron AccuFilm for dentures, which is perfectly fine, right? The horseshoe, um, yeah. kind of, um, of articulating paper, but I've always used 20 micron um, probably because I was told to and never really challenged it. If I'm going to be absolutely honest, I think it's, it's less of a concern now because I use T-scan even on single crowns. You'd be amazed at when patients tell you, oh yeah, the bite's really good. It's perfect. And I'm going to show you a couple of those scans um, moving forward. Okay. 23, you guys are getting bored with my... Uh, Questionnaire here. Are we having four minutes left? How are we doing? Uh, Perfect. We're doing fine. So um, the answer is B. Answers. B. Uh, 
three people got it right. Okay. So the big thing here is um, what is what is accuracy and what is precision, right? A lot of people will say, well, if the dentist doesn't know just looking at pictures, that's not really um, scientific or it's really not clinically relevant because I'm going to have the patient who's going to tell me, hey, it's high, I don't feel it, uh, move to the front, move to the back. And so what I want to show you is what patient perception really is. This is a full mouth rehab that I didn't do. Uh, I inherited. This is a three unit bridge, uh, 11 through 13, that I had to redo. Uh, 12 is missing due to recurrent decay. And the patient tells me, hey, the, the uh, bridge is perfect. Go ahead and submit it. And the patient used the word perfect. So I got my T-scan out after I had submitted it, of course and said, uh, let's, let's just check this bite. And my sensitivity is a little bit too high, but you can tell that the, the posterior abutment is overloaded. So I did a little bit of an adjustment to protect my dentistry. And the patient said, well, that's more perfect. Well, perfect is perfect, right? And so this patient did not have the ability to guide me. And if I had left the bridge in this state, very possibly, uh, real possibility that I could chip porcelain, I'd be explaining that the lab didn't make it right or whatever, right? And then, um, here we go. Uh, Quick question. Yep. If, if you make that bridge and you find another surfaces to adjust, do you adjust them or do you just adjust what you fix? Um, the patient actually asked me about the pink and I gave her the option to get her bite dialed in and she declined. She just wanted me to fix what she had. Okay. So I left it. I have to, you have to honor what the patient's, uh, what the patient gives you permission to do. Um, but they don't have that option if you don't make them aware. So this particular patient is a Sjogren's patient, high decay rate. Uh, tooth number 18 and tooth number 19 had full gold crowns that needed to be replaced due to recurrent decay. Uh, this is the this is the point where my assistant comes and gets me and says, hey, doc, she says the bite's right. We need to cement these in. I come in, I double check with the patient. She goes, yeah, it feels really, really good. And now I know this patient because I've already done uh, DTR on her. And so um, I take out the T-scan, I measure this, and then I do my adjustments, take another measurement, and she says, oh, that actually does feel better. So the point of this is the, if you're relying on the patient to tell you and give you feedback, they aren't always accurate. And so, and the first, the first, um, you know, the perio and the decay slides that we tested, everybody had uh, some form of technology to give them information. Because if you looked at it just clinically, you wouldn't see this. Like this is this, right? And even here we're using a perio probe. So if you're relying just on the AccuFilm to get you, to get you where you need to be, you're going to be correct somewhere between 13 and 4% of the time. How we Javier, doing? you asked me what, um, what diagnostics I used on Monday. I just put it all together for you in a nice format. Beautiful. This is everything I measure pre and post. Fantastic. All right, guys, that's all I have. Oh my God, Thanks, brother, man. you make us have so much fun. You teach us a uh, lot, not just dentistry, you teach us something how we can interact when we're doing these live uh, uh, sessions and always has been amazing. Also, this creates a lot of good discussions into the test and we have actually Dr. Kirsten has uh, helping uh, answer this question. So I'm really thankful for him uh -huh. also to give us a hand over here. We always need more, more hands, you know, that's awesome. Well, the big, the big thing, um, the big takeaway from this is if any of the people that participated um, treated the patients in the slide 
um, they would have had different treatment. Whereas if we had all treated the decay or the perio, we would have been, 90% of us would have been treating the same thing. I think that's the big take home message and you can't rely on the paper marks. You cannot rely on the patient. Absolutely, it drives, it drives the point home really because uh, we spend so much time and so much uh, machinery now. Uh, you know, if you go to Javier's lab, you see all these machinery all over the place. And then we take that beautiful work and we take it and we put the paper and we're still using yesterday's uh, technology and, and perception to, to adjust these things into place. Um, I think that's a very valid and, and, and uh, important point. Uh, that's definitely has gotten me to 